So a few days ago, I reacted to Hashirama versus uh, Kainu. And I'm like, hmm. So if that one admiral is that strong, right? How strong are the other six admirals? Are they actually Hokage worthy? Are they Kage worthy? And yeah, let's check it out. I clicked the wrong These button. seven admirals oh are the world government's gracious. greatest military power, considered to be some that of was the strongest a jump fighters in the entire series. Okay. And today, we will explain and rank all of them, starting with like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. A Kainu is pretty strong. Will he be Hashirama when I, when I react to that? Yes. Uh, I admit it. Yes, I've seen in the comment. Oh, so many comments, so many different paragraphs. I read them comments, by the way. And tell me that Hashirama gets stomped out. And I'm coping. Yes, I was coping. I'm not gonna lie. My favorite character getting washed by a volcano. It's hard to come to come to those terms, but it is what it is. The blue pheasant. Kuzan is the first the admiral we were introduced to in the anime the? after the Straw Hat crew encountered him during the Long Ring Long Land arc. No. There, he easily outclassed the whole crew and made Luffy realize just how powerful the admirals really are. Although yeah. Kuzan tries to follow the world government orders, he occasionally disregards them. All which was best shown in Ohara uh, when he lets young dude. Robin escape. He was also shocked by Sakazuki's decision to blow up a ship full of civilians, which he thought was completely unnecessary. Kuzan ate the Hie Hie no Mi, a Logia type Hie devil. Hie no that allows him to create, control, and transform his body into ice. Wait, I have a question. So, if he can turn himself to ice, right? What good does that do, my boy, uh, Aokiji? Because let's just say he turns to ice, right? Then, then what? Like, you're just ice. That seems kind of pointless. I'm not gonna lie. Like, what? What good do you? What use do you have to turn yourself to ice? Like what? What? I don't. I don't see like a, a point in that ever, besides warming up like your beverage or something. Or as a walking, <laughs> walking ice box. Since ice is a solid element, Kuzan can be hit easily, even with the attacks not yeah. infused with hockey. However, these attacks cannot harm him in any way. Instead, his body would just shatter apart when struck, only to effortlessly reform seconds later. Kuzan is. Okay. Now that doesn't even make sense. You're telling me you shatter the ice. The ice just floats together. What if it's hot outside? What if it's like in the summer? In a, in, in a desert as well. You punch this man. He shatters. And he just forms back because he's ice. What if he gets turned to water? He's also able to form constructs out of ice. For example, in combat, that don't make he can no sense. weaponry, primarily forming swords and spears. That makes sense. He can also make more like a sub-zero like from Mortal Kombat. I'm assuming Mortal Kombat references. An interesting references. thing about Kuzan is that he's one of the few Devil Fruit users who can bypass the weakness of falling into the sea. He can achieve this by freezing the sea before he can sink below the surface. Yeah. Not only does this keep him from drowning, <laughs> but it also lets him prevent enemies from escaping by sea by freezing their ships in place or rendering the sea a solid That's battle pretty broken, for yeah. entire armies to fight on. During the summit, I'm not Kuzan's gonna power lie. is well exemplified, with him engaging Whitebeard, the strongest man in the world, head to head and holding his own. He also battled Jozu, one of the Whitebeard's most formidable men, Jozu. and defeated him with relative ease, completely well, he, he incapacitating him for the rest of the war. Ultimately, Kuzan <laughs> emerged from the war almost entirely unscathed, with nothing but a small bruise, which, when you think about the scale of this war, it's pretty impressive. After the Marine Ford War, he was nominated for the position of Fleet Admiral, but lost it in combat against Akainu. Mm. After Akainu was appointed, Al Aokiji resigned from his position, tough. refusing to serve under Akainu due to his cruelty. Following his Wait, so let's just, because I'm not, I don't know what happens in Marine Ford besides Ace getting uh, hit with the donut. Uh, that's what I all know about uh, Marine Ford. So, this is based off of my own speculation. So maybe he ends up being a good guy. Well, he is a good guy, right? And then he decides to join the Straw Hats. The Straw Hats has this OP dude. How can they lose? They got Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Jinbei, Chopper, Usopp the God, and, and Ice Bro, Ice Bro, Frozone. <laughs> How can they lose? You know, that's OP. Marines, he became part of the Blackbeard Pirates, oh, one of the most feared yeah. groups in the world. I lied. Based on all of this, Aokiji should <laughs> never mind. be in the A tier. Ryokugyu. 
the Green Bull. Who? Ryo Kukyu attained his admiral status off screen during the two year time skip, filling one of the two free admiral spots left by Aokiji and Akainu. During the latest level, Ryo Kukyu and Fujitora engaged in battle with the Flame Emperor Sabo and a few revolutionary oh, army commanders. He also effortlessly defeated oh, King and Queen, two all stars of the Beast Pirates, with bounties of over 1 billion bellies. Ryo Kukyu ate the Morimori no Mi, a Lokia type devil fruit that allowed oh, him to oh, it's this control dude. and transform oh. his body into plants. Notably, as plants are a solid element, he cannot turn intangible. However, non hockey attacks are still harmless to him and he'll easily heal from any damage. The way he regenerates is also pretty interesting. As he regenerates by sprouting out of the ground and growing back into his normal self. When attacking the beast pirates, he turned his fingers into sharpened tree branches and freely grew them to inhale dozens of enemies over a large area with ease. Additionally, his plants can rapidly absorb any liquid they touch, which includes dehydrating living creatures after impaling them, leaving them as shriveled husks. Furthermore, he appears to be able to taste the liquid he absorbs, as shown when he impaled a barrel of alcohol with a branch and remarked on its flavor. He can also perform really unusual feats with the plants that he generates, such as growing a giant flower on his back and using it to fly. It has also been shown that- Okay, ordinary... that's where I gotta pause. Bro, okay. Okay. How do you get to fly because of that? What? That, oh, that, that part makes no sense. Also, the whole- you can shank you and absorb the liquid out your body is kind of nuts. I didn't know about that. That was a little crazy. And the fact he can rebirth himself. Like, what? The he walking carrot. On any surface he touches, resulting in him leaving behind a trail of plants wherever he walks. <laughs> this was shown when Easy Ulan, to find. which is known to be a barren and desolate area, was shown with greenery for the first time in many years. It's unknown if this is passively active or something he does on purpose, but it's cool nonetheless. Although Ryokuji uh -huh. is obviously a very strong fighter, Why is I don't his head really like think that? he's on his the neck. same level as Aokiji. So I'll have to put him in B tier. I'll give him C tier. The yellow monkey. Hisato is the only remaining admiral from the previous trio, with Aokiji leaving and Akainu being promoted. As with other admirals, Hizaru's mere presence is enough to cause mass panic and scare many weaker pirates. This was perfectly showcased yeah. on the Salvadi archipelago, where most of the supernovas fled upon seeing him. While on the island, Hizaru was able to overwhelm four of said supernovas, Hawkins, Roge, X-Drake, and Apo, with no effort, defeating each of them in a single attack. Hizaru also engaged in a one-on-one -on -one battle against Silver's Rayleigh, the former right Silver's hand of the pirate Rayleigh. king. And one of the I wonder how shrunk he is, because on my list that I did uh, a few days ago people were saying that he's s tier what does he do if you guys let me know in the comments because i'm not really too sure i thought he's strong no idea strongest swordsman in the world Suppose during their sword battle okay. while rayleigh looked very tired kizaru seemed calm implying that if their fight continued he would easily be able to defeat him during the summit war he Forgot once again this. showcased his strength by battling several of whitebeard's division commanders on equal footing and later whitebeard himself whom he was able to seriously injured without a doubt his mm. greatest strength lies in his devil fruit i thought the person that gave him that hole in his chest was a. Uh... I didn't know it was a uh, kizaru i thought it was a kainu himself that did that, whom so... he was able to I don't know it was uh Kizaru. Hmm. The more you know. I remember thinking of Ace. The donut shop himself. Was seriously injured. I don't know. Without a doubt, his greatest strength lies in his devil fruit, the Pika Pika no Mi, which Pika allows Pika him no to Mi. turn his body into light. With it, he can move at light speed, allowing him to maneuver around the battlefield without his enemies being able to keep up unless they have sufficiently developed observation hockey. Kizaru also uses his light speed to repeatedly smash the subscribe button. Alright, that's just it's a stupid joke, but you should seriously press it if you like the content. Thanks. You happy now? Anyway, you can also kind of <laughs> teleport. Are you happy now? The devil fruit, transforming his body into light. Wait, oh, question. So, can he only move at light speed whenever he's using his fruit? Or no? Like, whenever he has his fruit active, that's when he can move light speed. Like, as in it shows him, uh... Oh, oh, sorry, I had to yawn. I'm very tired. Very, very tired. So, like, whenever he shows, like, himself, like, transporting, and it shows, like, the light, is that whenever his fruit's active and that's when he can move light speed? Or, like, just him normally walking, he can move at light speed? Or does he have to be transformed into light to move at light speed? That's my question.
Because that, that would make sense. Another location. His physical attacks can be strengthened as well. By moving his leg at the speed of light, the Admiral's kicks can be given yeah. massive weight and momentum, greatly increasing their power and allowing <laughs> Kizaru to deal tremendous damage to opponents with individual blows. Now, Kizaru is a very tricky Admiral to rank, as he's always very confident and thinks he can easily defeat anyone. For now, I'll have I to mean, I don't blame him. But he definitely has the potential oh, to be an S tier in the future if he proves himself. Black Arm Zephyr. Zephyr, also known Ooh. as Z, was a former Marine Admiral and the Commander in Chief of the Neo Marines. He's definitely not. He served as the main antagonist of One Piece film Z, where he and his forces <laughs> clashed with the Straw Hat Pirates as they were caught in the midst of his grand plan to destroy the New World. After he resigned from the Marines, he was requested to stay in the military as an instructor, and he trained okay. many powerful. Bro, he looks like a. What's the? He looks like a a ripoff. Not ripoff, obviously, but like his arm reminds me of Doc Ock from uh, Spider Man. I'm getting that kind of like, I almost said tentacle vibe, but like how he, <laughs> like the extra metal arm, that's what it reminds me of a lot. So we become the high ranking officers of their the generation. Three hand gripper thing. Kizaru, Aokiji, yeah. and Akainu. Even after he completely abandoned the world government, many of his former students showed genuine remorse at having to fight their instructor, indicating that he was an excellent and charismatic teacher. Alongside Garp, Sangoku, okay. and Sudu, Z was one of the most powerful marines of his generation. Another interesting thing about him is that he's the only no marine admiral that doesn't possess the devil fruit powers. Oh, Despite it's his all old hockey, age, huh? Zephyr had tremendous physical hockey prowess. Or tech. He was easily able to counter Luffy, Zoro, Wait, and Sanji. Zephyr had tremendous physical prowess. Oh, okay. He was easily able to counter Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji, despite fighting them inside of a small cabin, with none of the three strongest straw hats able to land a direct hit. Since he didn't eat a devil fruit, he mostly relied on his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, using his physical strength and hockey to fight. He oh, so he does have hockey, against okay. Luffy while in his gear two Why the metal arm, with Kizaru for some time. He was aware of his age, though, and after his final battle against Luffy, he admitted that he'd grown old and weak. Since Zephyr is considered non-canon, and there isn't much information Okay, so he is not canon. I was making sure. I was about to say. Unfortunately, have to put him in C tier. Fujitora, Dang. the Wisteria Gave him trash Tiger. tier. Same as Green Bull, Fujitora attained his rank off screen during the time skip. His justice motto as a Marine is humane justice, and his humane primary goal is to justice. protect as many people as possible. He tries to never put innocent civilians in harm's way during okay. conflicts and avoids causing collateral damage with his attacks. Okay. Oh, he's a pretty good guy. He's a he's good also guy. He's really strong as well, as he was able to fight Sabo to more or less of a standstill, emerging from mm. a battle without a scratch. It was also evident that he didn't go all out in this battle and merely stole Dude, see, this is why I'm watching One Piece now, and I'm struggling watching it. Not struggling watching it, but... Hold on, let me, let me backtrack. So, the main reason why I'm watching One Piece is because I want to get to, like, these kind of, like, fights and scenes and this kind of lore. I like, like, the, the really, really strong characters. It's just, like, so... In my opinion, it's, like, kind of slow in the beginning, and that's why I can't binge it as how i would like to but i am watching at a moderate pace like two three episodes a day but i want to catch up extremely bad to like the really really good arcs because i'm actually i've been on sky p for like the past two to three weeks bro Phew. Time, which means that his I just I, I can't binge that arc. I, I really one of can't. Feats is defeating Jax, Kaido's top commander, in a naval battle. Despite but being I think blind, I'm almost over with it. Because I'm now seeing a no. Fujitora can handle himself perfectly well in combat, even against very powerful enemies. Notably, he has excellent hearing, having heard Nami's lightning from kilometers away when neither oh. Doflamingo nor Law next to him did. He also stated that also he don't have a lot of time like clouds, that. Which doesn't seem like very to. useful, but it's cool. I Fujitora ate the Zushi Zushi no Mi, Zushi. a paramecia type devil fruit that allows him to manipulate gravitational forces. Wait, what's pair the paramecia? The Zushi Zushi no Mi, a paramecia type devil fruit. I still don't know what that is. I'm gonna look that up real quick. Okay, so the paramecia devil fruit. Okay. Still know what that means. <laughs> it allows him to manipulate gravitational forces. 
Fujitora can drastically increase the gravity around others, keeping them on the ground and making it difficult for them to move. No, he can broken. also further increase the gravity and press down opponents under immense pressure, even so going as far fly? as to create large craters deep into the ground. Moreover, the Admiral can also use these powers defensively by making fields of reverse gravity to repel attacks. He can also use gravity to pull objects directly towards himself, which Fujitora has used multiple times to summon meteorites to strike his opponents. Yeah. Despite his incredibly powerful Devil Fruit abilities, Isho is also a master swordsman, which he showed when he easily deflected Zoro's attack and sent him underground. <laughs> Although we saw Fujitora fight several times, it was never again seriously strong opponents. Therefore, for now, I'll have to put him in the B tier with Green Bull. Akainu, the Red Dog. Akainu is the current fleet admiral. The Red Dog. Hey, I used to my thumbnail. fans to be the strongest current admiral in the, <laughs> the story. Red Sakazuki dog. has command over the entire marine organization, from ordering all soldiers and officers as he sees fit to issuing a buster call on any island he deems to be a threat. He's only superior. He sounds to like another freezer. Commander in Chief Kong and the Five Elders. Akainu is an adamant believer in absolute justice, and he believes that all evil should be eradicated, even if it requires sacrificing innocent lives in the process. You cannot do that. That alone contradicts your justice itself. Like, bro, to get random civilians involved in your monstrosity, not monstrosity, in your, uh, your thought of justice is horrible. He is incredibly rigid and absolute in his beliefs, showing little compassion for He's anyone the evil or one. anything, and is ruthlessly willing to do whatever it takes to serve his own goals, no matter the cost. Because of this, Akainu is by far the most ruthless <laughs> the, 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 of the three, three time skip admirals. During the Buster Call attack on Ohada, Sakazuki's beliefs led him to go as far as destroying a refugee ship full of innocent people and marines simply because of the slight possibility that a scholar could be hiding on board. Sakazuki's logic was That's that insane. even one of the scholars of Ohada had escaped, the entire mission would have been a failure. During the Summit War, Sakazuki's fighting prowess was well established against Whitebeard, whom the Admiral matched up to in a head-to-head -head confrontation. Oh While Whitebeard God. managed to gain the upper hand and deliver a serious <laughs> blow to Akainu, the Admiral managed to melt off half of Whitebeard's face in the exchange. Nah, Further during bro. the war, Sakazuki proved himself firmly superior to Ace, effortlessly overpowering him in a clash and killing him afterwards. Ultimately, yeah. Sakazuki proved I mean, to be, to be fair, he only killed him because of Luffy. That was 100% Luffy's fault. I'm just saying. And not even the combined <laughs> efforts of Jinbei, Marco, Jinbei. and Jinbei do anything more than slow him down. It was only when Shanks arrived and personally engaged Akainu that he finally stopped fighting. We didn't see much of Akainu post time skip, but it is believed that he got even more powerful and will probably be one of the uh, final apps. I thought you were going to be like a lot of them in post time skip. After he managed to defeat Aokiji and deal some serious damage to Whitebeard, I believe that Akainu is the first admiral that deserves to be placed in the S tier. Sengo. So my Tulus I did was wrong. Because everybody was saying that the, the admirals were were S, right? But this says otherwise. Yeah, I, I know you guys don't like the Jaegerists, right? I, I get that. Y you, you know, I see a lot of the Jaegerists slander. But it seems like he has some valid points. That's what, it, from my perspective, he seems like it's some valid, valid points. I don't know. It's kind of... Huh. Sengoku was the fleet admiral. Or maybe you guys are just a little bit biased. He was one of the major figures in the world, along with Whitebeard, Shiki, and Garp during the times when Goldie Roger was still alive. Sometime during the, the time skip, he became a general inspector. And his oh, look was at that. I told you, that's the goat. See? Goat D. Roger? And then he died and reincarnated to the, the real. Sometime during the time skip, the he real became a general Goat D. Roger. I told, I told you guys, bro. General Inspector, and his position was taken by Akainu. Although not much is known about Sengoku's past, we know that he joined the Marines at the age of 23, and eventually rose up through the ranks achieving Admiral status. Mm -hmm. He was also powerful enough to stop and capture the legendary pirate Golden Lion Shiki in a battle that destroyed Shiki. half the Marine Force. During the Summit War, he mainly stayed on the sidelines and was responsible for commanding the Marine Forces. He ultimately did a pretty good job, and with Akainu's help, he managed to turn one of Whitebeard's allies against him. Sengoku ate the Hito Hito no Ni, model, Dai a mythical zoan type devil fruit that allows him to transform into a large golden Buddha, boosting his powers and overall strength. The Buddha. This form also allows him to launch golden shockwaves by striking his hands forward, and was yeah. strong enough to injure even the Blackbeard pirates. When Sengoku first used his fruit's powers in an attempt to execute both Luffy and Ace, nearby marines noted that they had never seen him use it before, suggesting that he rarely transforms. Mm. Okay, so where should Sengoku be in the rankings? S2? Well, we need to take into account that he's very old, and before 
poor Marine Ford, okay. he probably didn't fight anyone for a long time. Honestly, I don't think he could take on any of the younger admirals in his current state, mm. and therefore, I'll have to place him D -tier. in the tier. Oh, Click on this video, okay. where we explain okay. 52 secrets about- I think like he's- I mean, it's trash. He belongs in the trash. But he didn't do that, which is kind of a letdown. And I might unsubscribe because of that. But, uh, yeah. Let me guys know your thoughts on this Jaegers video. Listen, it can't be that bad. It's not that bad, as you think, okay? But, uh, yeah, that's it. And I'll catch you guys next one. See ya.